everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to continue breaking down Week 11 from a daily fantasy perspective. What's happening, Jim? Having a great week, Greg. I got to talk to Frank a couple of days, which I always enjoy. Now I get to talk to you, too. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. Glad to have you back. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. Married man. Things are good. And they're going to get better because I'm going to win some money this weekend, making my new wife happy. And in order to win some money, i got to find some cheap value place to plug into my lineup. So let's begin at the quarterback spot. We haven't been able to do this since week one. It's Nick Foles. In Indianapolis at $7,000. Why do you like the returning Nick Foles this weekend? I just think the salary of Nick Foles is way too low at $7,000. And yeah, this is not the best game environment, especially if T.Y. Hilton does wind up sitting because you're probably not going to get a back and forth affair here. But Nick Foles is entering what I think is a pretty good system. Gardner Minshew was good when he was playing with this team. And now you're putting in a guy who has been a pretty serviceable quarterback his entire NFL career into that system, surrounded by guys like Chris Conley, DJ Chark, D.D. Westbrook. It's a pretty good system, and I think that that should allow Nick Foles to be a good quarterback. And if I can get a good quarterback for $7,000 in a dome against a non-elite defense, I'm happily going to take that. If we're looking at John Filippo as an offensive coordinator, we know this guy wants to pass. They haven't done that all that much this year, likely because Foles is out, but Last year before Filippo got fired, the Vikings threw 61% of the time on first and second down in the first half of games. That was the third highest mark in the league at the time of his firing. So I would expect this team to be a bit more pass heavy going forward. And if they do that, then I think Nick Foles should pay off pretty easily at $7,000. I want to get Christian McCaffrey and Dalvin Cook into my cash game rosters. In order to do that, I'm probably going to have to spend down. I think that Nick Foles, among the guys Below, like, $7,500 is the guy who stands out most to me. Back in the saddle for the Jacksonville Jaguars and back in our fantasy lineup since Nick Foles. Get him in there this week at a very good price against Indianapolis. Moving on to the running backs, Tevin Coleman let fantasy owners down a major way last week on Monday Night Football where he just didn't do enough. But you're going back to the well here this week with Coleman facing off against Arizona. A couple of weeks back, Arizona stifled Coleman. It was a Jimmy G show. You believe that he can get things right here against the Cardinals the second time around? Yeah, I think with Matt Breida likely to sit, it's a good spot to go back to Tevin Coleman. Now, Raheem Mostert's going to play a pretty decent amount here, I would assume. So it's not as if Tevin Coleman will play every snap. But we should expect his snap rate to increase probably to around 55 to 60 percent. He should get most of the early down work in. Last week with Brita being banged up, we saw Tevin Coleman run a season-high 26 routes according to Pro Football Focus. So if you can give me a lot of that early down work and some targets, I'm going to feel pretty good about Tevin Coleman here at $6,700. Arizona defensively ranks 29th against the pass. That should lead to a lot of touchdown chances for the 49ers, and they're also 24th against the rush. So I'm not that worried about the fact that Tevin Coleman didn't do all that well in that first game against Arizona. Now, this 49ers offense may not be all that efficient this week. Joe Staley is out. George Kittle's likely out. Emmanuel Sanders might sit. But we're going to get volume from Tevin Coleman at a spot where they are still favored by 10, even though the line is factoring in all those injuries. I think that's enough there to go with Tevin Coleman. I am a little bit worried here because this offense may sputter a bit. We could lose some goal line work to Raheem Mostert. And there are some other value facts we can consider. Uh, Brian Hill's not on this list, but he is an option as well at $5,900. But I think that Coleman is a one who does stand out to me even when we consider all those factors he is not a slam dunk play by any means but i think for six thousand seven hundred dollars a guy with his upside is at least pretty intriguing to me the amount of upside is palpable you said all these 49ers that will be missing this game like matt Breida, likely like george kittle potentially emmanuel sanders all guys you ran through coleman's the healthy one and under seven thousand dollars in a game where he should get all the carries he can handle sure we'll see a little raheem moster you gotta like tevin coleman here on sunday Another player that everybody was all in on last week was Devin Singletary. And although it didn't exactly work out how he wanted, we had another opportunity here this weekend facing off against Miami. Singletary is priced at $6,500 on FanDuel this week, and it could be a bargain here, Jim. Yeah, I think so as well. I think that when you look at last week's game, yes, Devin Singletary didn't do a whole lot, but his usage was still really good. If we look at the past two weeks since Devin Singletary's role changed, he has 11 of 21 early down running back carries for this Bills team. It's about 50%. Frank Gore is still mixing in. Frank Gore is still getting some goal line carries. So we're not getting a situation where Devin Singletary will get all the carries in this offense. 
but he's getting work as a receiver, which means we don't need as much as a rusher. In those past two games, he has 18% of the team's targets. That is second behind John Brown, who is all the way up at about 30%. So John Brown is also a very good play. But Devin Singletary ran nine routes, split out wide or in the slot, according to Pro Football Focus. So he's probably going to have a pretty hefty receiving down workload in this offense. And I think that's pretty valuable when it's going up against the Miami Dolphins. Now, when you consider... You know that Singletary is probably going to split early down work and he may not get all the goal line carries. I think from a usage perspective, strictly, he's a lot like Alvin Kamara. Now, obviously, this is a very different offense. This is a very different player. He is not Alvin Kamara, but his workload is similar enough and where we can kind of overlook those concerns we have lingering about Devin Singletary. He'll play about two thirds of the snaps, get some passing down work, and he is explosive enough to bust off a big play. This Dolphins defense still not very good. They're worst against the pass. They're 24th against the rush. So I think at $6,500, Singletary does make a lot of sense. And I feel better about him getting passing down work than I do about Brian Hill. So if I have the money to get up to Devin Singletary at $6,500, I will try to do so. I do think that Hill is a good option too, but if I can get to Singletary, I absolutely want to do so. Absolutely. If you can find a way to get Singletary in your lineup here on Sunday, it's a really good spot. Obviously against the Miami Dolphins and what could be a blow-up game for the rookie, Devin Singletary. Fairly priced and well worth it here on FanDuel. Let's move on to the wide receivers here, Jim, and that brings us to Muhammad Sanu coming out of the buy for the New England Patriots. You're buying Sanu at under $6,000. It's now a few weeks since he's been traded, more acclimated into the offense. Why do you like Sanu over the other assets in New England? He's cheap, and he got a lot of volume last week or two weeks ago. I think that's the two things I really need out of Muhammad Sanu. Against an Eagles defense, it really does encourage you to pass against them. So we should get a lot of volume for the overall passing game here. And that's what we saw against Baltimore, too. And a lot of that volume went to Sanu. He had 14 targets in that game. That was the most on the team. He had three deep targets in that game as well. So a little bit of receiving yardage upside. And he also played every single snap, as did Julian Edelman, as did Benjamin Watson. So the Patriots kind of whittled things down. They stopped playing a rotation. Uh, Philip Dorsett played quite a bit, too. So I think that makes it a lot easier to decide which parts of this Patriots passing offense we want. And Mohamed Sanu is cheap access to big volume in a good matchup against the Eagles. And he's tied to Tom Brady. I think that this is a really good spot to go with Sanu. I think that if... He gets the usage we saw against the Ravens. This dude could blow up. I think that he is going to be part of my core as a wide receiver at $5,800. I think he has upside, and we know that he has a floor based on the volume in that game. You can kind of look at pretty much anyone in this passing offense, I think, that you know, guys like Watson, guys like Dorsett, they're viable too. And of course, Edelman is at $7,400. But if you're going to give me that volume for this cheap of a salary, I will happily accept it. Sanu is a cash game play and a very good tournament play as well. Volume should be there for Muhammad Sanu, as you saw it was two weeks ago. But Nikhil Harry could be active this week. Certainly some question marks uh, with Philip Dorsett, Julian Edelman, another week to get healthier. So uh, there's a lot of question marks when it comes to New England. But at this price of under $6,000 for Muhammad Sanu, if that workload's there, he's in a really good spot. We've been all over Hollywood Brown all season long, Jim, and no surprise to see you go back to him again. And why? Well, for good reason. The price is $5,600. And facing a... Really bad, Houston secondary. Hollywood Brown, why is he only 5,600? We've had a lot of disappointing games, so I understand why he's priced down there. And last week only played 40% of the snaps, so I think I understand why he is that salary. But it's also pretty easy to explain why some of those games have been disappointing. That's because the Ravens have been throttling teams. They murdered the Bengals. So it makes sense. They wouldn't throw all that much. But in that game, Hollywood Brown still had four targets. Two of those were deep targets. In the games that he has played so far this year, even when you include the games where he's been limited by that foot injury, he has still played or he's still gotten 23% of the team's targets. If you give me 23% of the targets against this Houston secondary for such a talented player in a good offense, I will happily take. We've seen some some fast guys do well against Houston, too. T.Y. Hilton, Tyreek Hill, Ted Ginn, Tyra Williams, all those guys have speed, and they've all done well against the secondary. So I think that Marquise Brown is a pretty good standalone play at $5,600. 
He is a good stacking partner with Lamar Jackson. And I think that if you're using Deshaun Watson, it also does make sense to use Marquise Brown and bring it back on the Ravens side as well. I want to stack this game as heavily as I can. And Marquise Brown, I think, is the most logical way to do so. It's going to be a tight game, I hope. I think it should be as well with two great quarterbacks on both sides. And if it is tight, that should lead to increased snaps for Hollywood Brown and a lot of receiving yards too. So at $5,600, I think that the upside here is just too tantalizing to pass up. The floor may not be all that good, but the ceiling, well, it is tantalizing indeed. Marquise Brown potentially paired with Lamar Jackson will work by himself. That could do it as well. you got to like Marquise Brown at this price of just $5,600. Finally, we get to the tight end position, Jim, and that brings us to Greg Olson taking on the Atlanta Falcons. And the Carolina tight end is priced at $5,100. And of all the crapshoot tight end out there, why do you like Olson this week? Yeah, there actually are a pretty good number of cheap tight ends. I don't mind. And we'll talk about a couple of them in here. But I think that Greg Olson is my favorite. If we look back uh, to last week, he had 10 targets in that game against Green Bay, which brings his overall market share up to 18% over the past four games. And the four games are there because Christian McCaffrey's passing workload has been a bit lower in those, which has given more targets to DJ Moore, Greg Olson, and Curtis Samuel. And Olson does benefit being $5,100 against this Atlanta defense. And, you know, we did see Atlanta play pretty well last week but that was also uh, a pretty big rivalry where the Falcons always seem to get up to play the Saints so I think that I'm willing to still go at this Falcons defense and use guys facing that means DJ Moore is six thousand dollars makes a ton of sense I like him as well but Greg Olson is fifty one hundred dollars and fills tight end while still giving you yardage upside which is so hard to find among guys in this range I think that we can look elsewhere I think that uh, Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph are both in play. They are both below $5,000. Dallas Goddard, especially if Alshon Jeffrey sits, is intriguing. And a Jack Doyle can't go. He missed practice on Wednesday. Eric Ebron at $5,200 would be a really good tight end play. But Greg Olson doesn't need anything to break his way to be a good play. He's just a good play straight up. So I think $5,100, great salary, great matchup. And Greg Olson is a high floor and high ceiling option at tight end. As you said, Olsen doesn't really need things to change in order for him to be a successful tight end option. You look at Carolina, we want a lot of these guys, like Curtis Samuel and DJ Moore, as you said, certainly Christian McCaffrey, obviously. But Greg Olsen, with his target share and what, what he's been doing lately, facing a soft Falcons defense, obviously lots to like, especially at this price. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Jim. It's been a blast. Good luck this weekend, and we'll see you next week. Thank you, Greg. Congratulations once again. Hopefully you can enjoy your first weekend of football as a married man, and we'll talk to you again next week. Absolutely. Tomorrow, Mike Blewett will join me filling in for Gabe Morenci as we go over his six favorite best bets for this weekend. Have a great night. Enjoy Thursday Night Football, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.